Hi, welcome to Coaster Mania. I'm Mike, and today I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions on Carowinds. This is one of the only amusement parks that is located in two states at once, so in certain parts of the park, you can stand in both North and South Carolina at once. Oh, and yeah, this is home to the tallest roller coaster with the traditional lift hill. No biggie though. Don't forget to like the video and share your feedback in the comments below. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Carowinds was the fourth park that Katie and I visited together. We went during the 2022 Carnival event and got to see what that was like compared to the same event at Kings Island from the previous year. This theme park of the Carolinas is known as the park where the Carolinas come together and was open in March of 1973. This park was originally planned to be a full-on resort with a theme park, NFL stadium, golf course, hotel, and a shopping center. This is quite different to how it actually turned out. Today, Carowinds is home to 14 roller coasters and is somewhat of a darling park of Cedar Fair. Sort of. We'll touch on that later. If you're familiar with my reviews, you'll recognize the structure I'm using. I'll be breaking up my opinions on Carowinds into 10 sections. I'll go through first impressions, theming, immersion, layout, amenities, food, staff, coasters, flat rides, and finally, operations. To tie everything together, I will crunch the numbers and give an average score. So let's go ahead and talk about my thoughts on Carowinds. Section 1. First Impressions Carowinds starts out strong with first impressions. As you're walking up to the front entrance on the easternmost side, you're greeted by the titan that is Fury 325. Cedar Fair Corporation, the parent company that owns Carowinds, loves their front entrance coasters, and Fury 325 is no exception. Beyond this, you're also greeted by the hyper that is Intimidator. Recently, Carowinds repainted Intimidator, and in my opinion, the bright red glossy paint on this coaster really shines and makes it look almost brand new. I would hope to see Fury 325 get this same kind of treatment soon. It is in dire need of a repaint. Once you pass under Fury 325, you go into the front gate. This front gate looks incredibly similar to the one located at Cedar Point. In my opinion, this front entrance looks clean, but a little too corporate. At the front of the park there is a typical main street with gift shops on either side. This main street is fairly nice and has the two rows of blue bricks going straight down the middle which marks the official state lines that the park sits on. The rest of the park feels very standard to what we've come to expect at any Cedar Fair park. There's a Camp Snoopy section, there's a small 1950s themed area, a boardwalk themed area, and a western themed area. Overall the coasters in these areas don't really do much in the way of matching the themes of the respective zones, except for one. Overall, I'd rate the first impressions of Carowinds a 9 out of 10. Section 2. Theming The theming at Carowinds is one of its weaker aspects. This park has the bones for a decently well-themed park, but not the substance. As mentioned previously, there are a few major themed areas at the park, but none of those areas really go beyond some of the facades. In the parts of the park that don't have a set theme, it's just a generic theme park styling. This isn't an ugly park to look at, but it isn't very well decorated either. One example would be the area near Fury 325. Walking up to the coaster, there is a 1950s themed restaurant, Jukebox Diner, and then it immediately goes to Fury 325, which has a sci-fi Hornet theme to it. There isn't a whole lot of cohesion here. On the opposite side, however, you have Copperhead Strike, which is a much more heavily themed ride that is Western themed and takes place in the Blue Ridge Junction section of the park. I guess the one thing I do have to look forward to as a slight improvement to this aspect of the park is the upcoming renovations to the section of the park near Afterburn, which will be called Aeronautica Landing. This new section of the park appears to be addressing some of the aspects the park is lacking in. This makes me curious to see what further renovations the park might see, if any. Focusing on what we had when we were at the park, however, there was a lot that could be improved. A few of the ways I could see this done is if the area near Fury 325 and Hurler received a retheme more in line with what is already present on the Giga Coaster. Why not focusing on the idea of the Hornet and making something like the Hornet's Nest? This could go in any number of directions, but would greatly improve an otherwise lackluster part of the park. Overall, I'd rate the theming at Carowinds a 6 out of 10. Section 3. Immersion Tagging along with the theming is the Immersion. 
This was quite similar to the previous category in that the park didn't do the greatest job at this. I can't help but feel this is slightly due to the geography of the park itself. It sits on mostly flat land, so any ride that goes above the tree line means you can see an almost 360 degree view outside of the park. Beyond this, a lot of the rest of the park seem to lack some of the cohesion that other Cedar Fair parks have that we've been to. It just feels like certain rides or restaurants were placed wherever there was room. It honestly confuses me knowing that this park was built by the same company that built Kings Island and Kings Dominion and had a similar history to both of those parks. In some ways, Carowinds almost feels more like a Six Flags park, except in its newest additions. One nice thing about the park is that at least while you're walking around the inside of it, the tree cover and small amounts of theming elements do a decent job of keeping you feel like you are inside the park and does close off the rest of the world. It's really only when you see above these trees where this immersion is broken. Overall, I'd rate the immersion at Carowinds a 6 out of 10. Section 4. Layout the layout of Carowinds was one that initially felt confusing, but once we had some time to actually experience the park, found that it was very easy to navigate. The park is in an oval shape with a few protruding areas on the north and south sides of the park. There are a decent number of pathways making it easy to get from one side of the park to the other, but the south side was a tad bit confusing to navigate, at least at the beginning. I may also want to attribute this to potential dehydration since when we were at the park, it was incredibly hot and humid and every waking moment you spent outside meant that you'd be sweating out the shower you took that morning. Fortunately, you don't ever have to walk too far to get to whatever ride you're looking for. This is the point in time where I'd like to mention the Carowinds app. Cedar Fair parks all have their own individual apps that shows the park map itself and times for events and shows. These apps are really helpful with navigating around the park as it allows you to filter out different landmarks. It's also helpful that it shows your live location while you're in the park, allowing you to quickly figure out exactly where you are. I should mention this video is not sponsored by Cedar Fair. I wouldn't be mad if they decided to, maybe? Spit in my DMs? Overall, I'd rate the layout of Carowinds an 8 out of 10. Section 5, Amenities. I just mentioned being dehydrated, but fortunately I can say that I take full blame for that. Around the park, Carowinds had plenty of water stands, restrooms, benches, and well air conditioned buildings where you could catch a break from the humid air. I could have just done a better job at keeping myself hydrated. Fortunately, the drink stands allowed you to refill your own hydro flask with water for free. In fact, similar to what we experienced at Kings Island, the park PA system had frequent announcements encouraging guests to go to one of these drink stands to get free refills of water. Where Carowinds lacked, however, was shade and misters. A lot of this park is lacking in tree cover, meaning that as we were walking around the park, there were certain parts where the sun was just relentlessly beating down on us, with little to no escape. Furthermore, a lot of the queues for the rides didn't have covers and also lacked misters. Some of the rides did have misters in their lines, but they were either off or broken most of the time. This means that as we were standing in line for rides like Copperhead Strike, which had a couple of covered areas in the queue, people would leave a gap in front of them in order to be able to stay in the shade and not be forced to wait in the open sunlight for too long. In my opinion, especially with how hot and humid it gets, it is inexcusable and really should be taken care of for the health and safety of their customers. Overall, I'd rate the amenities at Carowinds a 7 out of 10. Section 6, Food. Oh boy. As if I haven't been ragging on this park enough, we've gotta talk about the food. The food at Carowinds was, uh, it's kind of, the food is, uh, get on with it. Yes, get on with it. The food. There are a, 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 a lot of options and uh, some, oh, okay, time to come clean. The food situation at Carowinds was not great. I know I've not been the nicest about this park, but this park is so close to being great. There's just areas that need improvements even in minor ways. So what's the food like here? Well, do you like pizza, fries, chicken nuggets, and barbecue? You're in luck. The food at Carowinds is as bog standard theme park food as you can get. There honestly isn't much in the way of healthy options except for one place. Located inside Harmony Hall was a place called the Sunrise Fresh Bowl Station. This had healthier options that were not swimming in grease. 
I like all those other things just as much as everyone else, but the last thing I want is to be eating an oversized plate full of hot and greasy treats right before stepping out into the unforgiving heat and humidity and riding some intense roller coasters. I'm not one to get sick on rides, but if I had to eat any of that other food, that probably would have changed. This is a change that I really hope to see come to light in the theme park industry as a whole sooner rather than later. I know it is more expensive to stock healthier food items, but in the long run, I think it would help in a lot of other aspects. For instance, your custodians would probably have a bit less stomach refuse to clean up. Something as simple as street tacos, like what you can find at both Six Flags Magic Mountain and Knott's Berry Farm, would go a long way. Unfortunately, I gotta rate the food here a 4 out of 10. Yuck. Carowinds, congratulations on winning my first category award that I'm assigning. Definitely not fine dining. Good job, you really earned it. Section 7. Staff. The staffing situation at Carowinds was somewhat interesting. There were a decent few staff members who did not appear to be having the best time of their lives, and then there were others who reminded me a decent bit of the ride ops at Kings Island. Many of the lower tier rides like Flying Cobras, Vortex, Ricochet, Carolina Cyclone, etc. etc. were staffed by ride ops that didn't seem to care too too much. They seemingly were just going through the motions without much urgency. On the flip side, you had the great ride ops present on Copperhead Strike, Fury 325, Afterburn, and Intimidator, the park's four best and most popular coasters. These ride ops were quick, efficient, and obviously took their jobs much more seriously. I commend everyone working here though, just because of the fact that it was so hot and humid. I know I've mentioned this a lot, but I can't exactly fault some of the ride attendants for not being at their absolute best when they were working in the somewhat stuffy looking outfits and having to endure the southern heat for as long as they had to. Consider this a call again for Cedar Fair to improve the working conditions at Carowinds for their employees. It really wouldn't cost all that much and would go a long way in helping with the comfort of your employees. In most of the restaurants, drink stalls, and gift shops, the associates there were obviously in a much more comfortable situation and seemed like they were in general happier. Many of them were very friendly to us and also helped improve our experience at the park. Overall, I'd rate the staff at Carowinds an 8 out of 10. Section 8. Coasters. Quoting myself verbatim from a previous video, Carowinds is a park that has arguably one of the best one-two punches that is somewhat brought down by the rest of the lineup of its coasters. This park has a good top four in Fury 325, Copperhead Strike, Intimidator, and Afterburn, but the rest are a mixed bag. One really strong positive that Carowinds has going for it is the level of care towards all of their coasters. Every single coaster at the park ran well. The only disappointment was that Nighthawk wasn't open the entire summer. This would have been my first Vekoma Flying Dutchman, but I did not get the chance to ride it. Everything else was as smooth as it could be expected and didn't show any major signs of wear and tear. The only coaster that was on the less than ideal side was Hurler. However, on the second half of our visit, the entire back half of Hurler was getting completely retracked. Like most everyone else, I too wish this coaster received the hybrid treatment that the former Hurler at Clone at King's Dominion got, but I don't believe we'll ever see this come to fruition. Other rides like Flying Cobras, I expected to be bad, but was surprisingly good. I can't believe I'm saying this, but the vest restraints and smooth track on this coaster actually show how good boomerangs can be. I actually grayed out in between the cobra roll and the vertical loop. Oh, and how could I forget? This park has Fury 325, the best giga coaster Katie and I have ridden, and one of our top 5 best coasters. It doesn't get much better than Fury 325. This coaster shows B&M at their peak. The combination of elements that this coaster has along with how long it is, yeah, no. Nothing compares. After riding something like Iron Gwazi, it really is difficult to say if this is still a number 2 coaster or a number 3. But then there's Copperhead Strike on the opposite corner of the park. Are you serious? No, there really isn't any competition. Overall, I'd rate the coasters of Carowinds a 9 out of 10. Section 9 flat rides. Lightening the mood even further is the flat ride collection at Carowinds. This park has a really strong lineup of flat rides. It has one of our second favorite styles of flat rides, the top scan by Mondial. I just love how out of control these flats feel. We did also discover one classic flat ride that we ended up really liking too, the Enterprise by Schwarzkopf, also known as Screamweaver. 
I was excited to ride this as I had never experienced one of these before and was blown away by how fun it was. I really hope this ride stays at the park for a long time, because this has a certain level of charm to it not matched by a ton of other flat rides. Beyond these two, the rest of the park has an extremely solid collection of flat rides, and I'm excited to say that with the revamping of the Aeronautica landing section of the park, even more will be coming. There is everything from a Windseeker, Observation Tower, Drop Tower, to the Zephyr ride, and more. Carowinds has an extremely well-rounded lineup of flat rides. Overall, I'd rate them a 10 out of 10. Section 10, Operations. Back to being the bearer of bad news, the operations of this park, as mentioned briefly earlier, were a mixed bag. One solid example of this was the disparity in the wait times on certain rides. I know operations can't be fast on a ride like Flying Cobras for instance, but it was worse than I would have expected. There was an incredibly short line, but we ended up waiting about 30 minutes just to get on. Unfortunately, this is not uncommon in a lot of the other rides at the park. The only other one that I'm pretty sure had slower operations was Vortex. This one made a little bit of sense because of the slightly awkward restraint system that not everyone was familiar with, but there did not seem to be any hurry in the steps of the ride hops. To mirror this, however, as soon as you stepped over to the Fury 325 queue, things were consistently quick during our entire visit to the park. Even with longer lines, I'm pretty sure the longest we ever ended up waiting was 45 minutes, and this was right before closing on the busiest day at the park. The write-offs for both Fury 325 and Intimidator took their jobs incredibly seriously and were very efficient with their operations. Overall, I'd rate the operations at Carowinds a 7 out of 10. As it is probably evident, Carowinds left me feeling a bit empty inside after leaving. I wasn't sure what to expect going into the park, but I left not entirely sure how I felt about it either. I absolutely wanted to continue riding Fury 325 as much as I could, but it made me feel like that one coaster has a lot of work to do trying to carry the rest of the park. Ultimately, I don't feel like one or two amazing rides can really carry the potential of making a seemingly mediocre park great. Obviously, Cedar Fair has been investing more and more capital into this park, and it shows. Each new area they touch up on shows a level of planning and creativity that will improve the experience over time, but I hope we don't have to wait too long for some of these additional improvements to come. One thing I didn't mention was the water rides. Seriously, this park had no water rides open when we were there. This could have potentially significantly improved the experience, allowing us an even better opportunity to escape the heat. Who knows, maybe 2022 is just the wrong time to go. Moving through the scores, I gave first impressions a 9 out of 10, theming a 6 out of 10, immersion a 6 out of 10, layout an 8 out of 10, amenities a 7 out of 10, food a 4 out of 10, staff an 8 out of 10, coasters a 9 out of 10, flat rides a 10 out of 10, and finally operations a 7 out of 10. This all adds up to an average of 7.4 out of 10, a solid C for Carowinds. The best aspects of this park really do help tip the scale in its favor, but not by much. As I said earlier, there are a lot of small ways this park could be improved, and I hope to see those minor changes come to fruition. Thank you so much for watching this review of Carowinds. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, feel free to leave a like and comment below and consider subscribing. I intend on uploading more content as time goes on and as Katie and I experience more parks and coasters. You can also find daily uploads on our Instagram page at Coastermania. Soon we'll be opening an Etsy page where you'll be able to buy prints and more of some of your favorite coaster photography of ours. Thanks for watching the video and ride on, Coaster Maniacs!